Hi Colin, welcome to the camp. Thank you are you. here for the ninth time, I just heard. Yes, I've just heard that too, yes. The ninth time, from the beginning, I believe. The very beginning. Okay. We are very interested in your lecture now. What will be the subject? The subject will be uh, how do we stimulate the feeling of this dance and from what part of our bodies does that stimulation come from? Sounds very exciting. We are looking forward to hear your lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, please, Colin James. Thank you. For anybody who has to do an afternoon lecture, it's absolutely the worst ever. Because after lunch, you're about to go to sleep. So now I've got to keep you on your toes, and I speak from experience sitting in your chairs coming after lunch. So, I'm going to keep your minds going, I'm going to keep you active, and I want to talk about a, a dance that, that I have possibly the most passion for, although I love all of the Latin American dances, I have a passion for the Paso Doble. The feeling of the Paso Doble. And I don't feel this in this step. I don't feel that how I should do that step. That doesn't feel good to me. So what I want to do today is bring up to you where does that feeling come from. Of course feelings can come from emotion. I'm going a little bit more from the practical side of where those feelings come in the Paso Doble. Where are they stimulated? What do I do in this dance to stimulate the feeling and the atmosphere that I want to get? The first part of that is through our feet. Now I want you all to sit down, put your feet in front of you. Okay, and you don't have to stand up, you can just do this. Just move the pressure in your feet. Just move that pressure in the feet. So you roll that a little bit forward and backward. Now go from left to right. This is what we do not do. We do not do the left to right. We use forward backward. Forward backward, good. Now take it forward, the pressure. Which part of the foot do you feel? The ball of the foot, perhaps the toes. Take that further back. What do you feel? The back or the heels? So within the foot, you're able to feel the heel, the ball, and the toes. And I'm suggesting to you that when you dance Paso, you tend to use the feet as a transportation of that movement rather than a way to stimulate the feel to take that transformation. So for example, you would see in the Paso Doble an appal, an appal. Now that appal should be seen but not heard. You should be able to see that appal because I am now absorbing that pressure through the foot so that it can then come out as a feeling, in this case, in my body. What tends to happen too much today is that the appal is heard and there is no feel that comes out of that or there's no stimulation of that feel that comes out. What tends to come out is more aggression. That sound should be something that is collected versus something that goes out. So the sound is not important, but the actual feel. When you take that foot on the floor, which part of that foot is taken on the apparel? What's the first part? You've said to me now you have the heel and you have the ball. You take an apparel. What part of the foot first? The whole foot? The ball of the foot? Or the heel? 
I think we can eliminate the hill. The first part is the ball of the foot. And a pal should go from back to front, not from up to down. So the, the appal is... So you hit the ball, you feel the heel, you press from that. The feeling comes up through the body and out as the step. It's not a stopping step. What does the word appal mean? You're doing this each day. What does it mean? Okay, get the Google out. Google it, tell me. That's a new word, by the way. It's one word. Google it. Hmm? Attention. Attention. Yes. To take the attention. Appel? Attention. So, who are you taking the attention of? Your partner, that's it. Not the whole room, just of your partner. So the sound of it is not as important. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the steps. My idea, of you, uh, my idea for you today is to present to you where can you get this feeling from. One of those places is through the foot. If I continue that, it will then be expressed through the body. Now the body is built up from compression. So that when you dance on a power and you lower, you're actually pushing up. I lower, but in lowering, I'm pressing that body up. Now I hope there's not going to be too many arms go up here today. Who dances standard? Wow, that's a lot of arms. There you go. There, oh. Who claims to dance standard? Okay. So you are used to using the foot and transporting yourself there and talking to the partner. But as you push from that foot, you relate body. So another feel or stimulation of that feel comes from the body. My partner. Dancing with my partner, how she moves and how I move stimulate once again a feeling. And finally, the music. So I've given you four examples there, there can be more, of where the feelings can be stimulated from. From your foot, whatever the step might be, through your body, between you and your partner and the use of that music. Probably 30 years ago, and I don't like the word 30, I could have demonstrated that a little bit better for you, but I've got somebody today who's much better at demonstrating that for me, and I would like to introduce them to the floor now. Please welcome to the floor two familiar faces around the world I don't know what their names are. I tried to invite Christina on her own, but she wouldn't come without Marius. So I had to invite the two of them. So, I would like you to show for me just the first part when I'm talking about the feet. Here. So, Marius brings... Christina in. Now, I'm talking about their inside leg to each other. They're going to be pressing on that leg to stimulate the movement that is about to come. And that movement is the step. Good. Once again, can you just do that for me? So close. Inside foot. Pressure. Press down on that pressure. Now, that stimulates the movement, as amongst other things, to move the next step. It is not simply to close and step. Would you just demonstrate it incorrectly to make the close, close and step. Do it again. The close and step incorrectly, close and step, is only dancing the step and not stimulating a movement or a feeling towards this dance. 
correctly, please. The close. Close and step. Now, there's a number of ballroom people in this room now. Which ballroom dance do you see that in? Okay, every ballroom dance you see that in. Which ballroom dance do you see that mostly in? Tango. Thank you. When you're going to walk, you don't just step. There's a pressure and a walk and a walk, side, close. Yes, you don't just go slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. In the Paso, we should not just go so that the body vibrates. It's not to make the body stiff. It's actually to transmit the movement which is about to come. Can you dance that for me again, please? And walk in, close, press down, and step. Good. Now, try to stay on the heel. Try to stay on the heel. Good. Now, this you won't see in motion. But that heel is not just a heel. What they're doing now, just go back a little bit, Maris, they're pressing the heel into the floor and rolling the foot down. The worst part of Paso Doble danced incorrectly, can you do it here? Just let that heel go down. So it's one, and we go, and two, three, four. It's just, you can hear that smash down on the floor. Why am I talking about the walk? Maybe I should ask the audience. Why do I talk about the walk in Paso? Because the whole dance is based on a walk. And it should not be that you do every single step on the toe. Now, now is not a march. It's like dancing the tango on toes all the time. You wouldn't see that, shouldn't see that here. But the point is, why do we not like dancing the heel? Because it's not a good feeling. It doesn't feel good because it goes like this. I always feel that she's pushing me over. I always feel that it, it makes a crash on the floor. Because as that foot goes into the floor, it doesn't just make a divot in the ground. You push it into the floor. You push it into the floor so that you can roll down on one foot and peel the other foot off the floor. Peel, do we know what peel means? What do you do with the banana? You don't cut it, you okay. peel it. So you don't just strip it off here. This foot rolls down, this foot rolls up. So the feeling when you put that heel in is not one of digging a hole, is one of pressing into that, projecting that. Can we just try that once again? So stop with the heel, a pal. And walk, heel, roll down. Is that hard? Yeah, that's very hard. Roll down, da da. Okay, one more time. If we were going to dance this, and you, you've not got that in the program, if we were going to dance this as a series of walks, series of walks, here, one step that's not often, or one movement's not often used is that when you take the heel into the floor, you lower the ball of the foot. Now, both of us, bend the knee that we're standing on. And then walk onto a straight leg. And roll that down. And bend the knee that you're standing on and walk once again. What you tend to see is walk. Walk, 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 walk. It looks so stiff. That's why I don't like doing walks because you're not doing the walks correctly. The feel of that comes from inside pressure, as we had it, inside pressure, walk. And you can see how that leg comes out. It's shot out through the pressure of the other leg. One, roll, control, flex. Roll, control, flex. One and one and one. One and one and one, one. It looks like we're just walking, but we're doing a lot of work there. Body. 
Can we just do the next part of your program here? And here, the use of that body to stimulate the movement. Just to there, not, not further, once again. So, Marius here will use his hip and now his body. And Christina will use the leg first that she's standing on. Do that as slow as you can. Leg that she's standing on, then the hip, and now the body, and that will be guided to the next step. Sorry. Once again. There. Controlled turn. So through his movement, which possibly started now through the foot, continued through the body. So the feel is not just the foot. The feel is the start of that foot, traveling through the body. Show that on your own, please, Marius. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. There. There. Good. So that movement that he gets in the body is not possible without the pressure coming from that foot and through the body. So the second stimulation is through the body after it's been commenced from the foot. Together, please. There. Okay. Good. And the last part of that was, I said, not the last, actually, the third part of that was through the couple. Now, to illustrate that, just stand a little bit towards the middle of the floor, please, um, after you've taken the step over each other. Ta-da. Okay, and stop there. Good. Now, what Christina's going to do, she's going to start her movement, which is going to be forward. This is now bodily, continue to arm. And that stimulated Marius, or Marius, to take that turn. Once again, can you do it the other way around so that, so that we flip that the other way around? Yeah, so you step forward. Yes, there. So I want you to watch here as slow as you can. Christina turns. Marius turns afterwards. Marius turns, now invites Christina forward. Once again, try to do it as one piece now. Okay, okay. So it's not just a timing on that, five, six, seven, eight. There is a coordination of that. Christina, Marius, Marius, Christina, Christina once again. Christina starts that, Marius follows. Marius goes, Christina follows. And we must be aware of that. To be able to get that feeling within the dance, we need to be aware of the couple and our movement. So we've got the foot coming through the body, reacting with the partner. How about you show me both of those parts now, right from the beginning, which started with the foot and then the body. Okay, good, I got rid of him. And then going into the partnership. Nice, thank you. I did not count there at all for a reason because I wanted them to have that feeling, share that with you and your reaction at the end of that. Nobody clapped whilst they were dancing. Nobody picked up something to drink or stamp their feet or fidget. Everyone was silent. And that's the command that this dance can take on the floor. I realize, I realize that there are many couples or in a final six couples, that's still many couples. But you can still, you can still keep that attention when you're devoted to the type of 
movement and feel that you get out of the Paso Doble. I think it's the time now that you put some music to it. But before you do that, I just want to now describe the last part of that feeling. When the Paso Doble music is, is on, everyone says, oh yeah, I feel that music, I feel that music. Not many people say that about cha-cha. Why? Well, maybe they don't listen is the reason why that doesn't happen. Because Paso has the strongest character of all of our dances. And possibly the weakest of characters is the cha-cha. Some fashionable step that comes out of whatever film that may be made of dancing. Oh, that's great. I like, do you see that step in that? Yeah, fabulous. Let's put it in the cha-cha. You don't say, let's put it in the paso. <laughs> it always goes into the cha-cha because it's a weaker one and offers really or opens the door for that. Paso creates drama, stillness, excitement, and conclusion. It does go ding 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 We don't have the violins playing in there so strongly. So now, when you dance that paso to get that feeling, you've got to listen. After you've got your choreography and you know this step is on five and this step is on seven and the highlight is on this number, you've now got to express that feeling. I cannot stand here and say to you, Pastor Dobie, dum da da dum da da dum da da I've got to get myself into that and get that sound out. Vroom, da bum da bum da bum Deeper sounds, lighter sounds. So what I would like you to use is exactly that piece that we did there, that short piece, but with music. I'm going to give you the tempo so that at least you've got that in your ear before we start. Yes, here we go. When you're ready. Just using the musical part of that, not musicality, just using the music. What did you see different this time to without music? Without the music, I told you about the feet, I told you about the body, I described how the partnership worked. When I spoke about the music, I told you it's got a lot of drama, it's got a lot of, a lot of passion, it's got conclusion. When you actually saw that now, what did you see? You saw timing. You should start to see the deeper sounds the quieter sounds, the attacking sounds. Bum da da bum da da bum da da bum dum dum da da bum da da bum da da dum bum bum da da dum da da dum da da dum 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 da da dum da da. It doesn't go one two three four five six seven. This is not just the appreciation of music; it's the listening. And I'm suggesting to you, you don't get this feeling out of the paso if you only count that. So you've got your program, it is five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. But now you've got to listen. One more time, please, same piece. I want you to be aware when you're watching now that you are listening and watching. What you hear is what you see.
One person once said to me, is what you see in your body should be transmitted from your feet. What you do with your feet should be seen in your movement. I would like then to conclude this first section with you by asking Christina Marius to go through just a little bit more from beginning of Paso, a little bit more of what you've seen here today. But I want you to watch, listen, and pick up from the feet, the body, and the partnership whilst listening to the music. From the beginning, please, Marius. Same tempo. I know. <coughs> you saw in that few steps that they were doing, you could watch all of it, perhaps no. But you picked out some of those points. Paso is not just an aggressive dance. It's actually an internal aggression that you choose to put out at one time or one moment. And illustrate it very well. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Okay, I am going to leave you now with that thought and I hope that you can join me in the group lesson or the workshop shortly after this. But I found a quote here that I would like to, to read to you because I, found, I find it very important for myself but for something for you to listen in the future. Students come in to me and say, oh, yes, this doesn't feel right, this doesn't feel right, this doesn't feel right, that feels good, and that feels bad. This is a quote from a sports person, a very famous sports person. And he said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I have been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I fouled over and over and over again in my life. And that's why I succeed. And that's what I want to leave with you. The more and more you do, the more failures you make, the success comes with it. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you later in the workshop. Thank Marius. you. Thank you very much. Christina. Thank you. Colin James, Marius and Christina. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Colin James. From the first camp, this guy was with us. Thank you very much. He forgot to say, when I first came here, I was a baby. Exactly. <laughs>